Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Welcome friends. My guest today is a woman with a passion for helping others and the determination to see it through. Her book, Northern Lights, details the incredible true story of her work to deliver an isolated Alaskan town the gift of a brand new turf field. Here to share the story of her work with the Barrow Alaska Whalers football team is Kathy Parker. Kathy, it's such a privilege to have you here on the show today. Thanks for making time for us. Oh, Brenda, it is is a privilege. Thank you for having me on the show. Well, first of all, did I say that right, Barrow, Alaska? Well, I have to tell you, they changed <laughs> their name back to the Inupiat uh, language. Oh. They changed their name, and I practiced it over and over again because I did not want to insult them. But yeah. the pronunciation of the name of the community now is Utkiavik. And I practiced wow. and practiced, and then when I went to visit after they had changed the name and I went to visit, um, I was so proud that I could say it correctly, but then they, <laughs> nobody was, they weren't saying it. And, uh, they were like, and so I was like, I tried really hard. So when you look at, when you look up, uh, Barrow, Alaska, it will, it will definitely come up, but it will have their, uh, that they, they have changed their name and it is oh, okay. it, it, it has a oh. whole bunch of vowels in it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, that would take a lot of practice for me. That's wonderful though. You know, I got to meet you a couple of years ago. I think it is now in Georgia around Thomasville area. And I just have to say that the moment that I met you, I knew that you were just a gym and your involvement with the boys and girls club and uh, you know, some of the, your vision for just helping you um, and the way that you're just, you're able to mentor people from all walks of life, really. But I would love for you to just start at the beginning of this story and tell us how it all started. Where did the inspiration come from? I mean, my goodness, this is a big undertaking. Well, a lot of people that hear about the story, they say, so are you from Alaska? And I'm like, do I sound like I'm from Alaska? No, I'm not from Alaska. <laughs> right. And so it can be, it, it is one of those stories that only the Lord, but uh -huh. um, we were living in um, Jacksonville, Florida. My husband, um, he's an ex-athlete and he was, he was coaching our children. Um, I had three sons that all played football and a daughter that's just as athletic, uh, that played softball. And so we had these four teenagers that were all playing sports. My husband and I, we would have, uh, players from the football team over on Thursday nights before the Friday night game. And we would cook meals and just mm -hmm. fellowship with them and just really so into them. And, yeah. you know, these coaches, many times they spend more time with these mm -hmm. young men than anyone else does, <laughs> you know, so wow. they have such an opportunity to make an impact in their life. So that was all going on. And yeah. uh, we were getting ready one Sunday for church and my kids called us in and they said, mom, dad, you've got to see this. And it was ESPN outside the lines and they were doing a special on this isolated community Barrow, Alaska, and they were showing the issues that they were having. They were losing their young people, especially their young men, and wow. they needed an incentive to keep kids in school and to motivate them and to give them some hope, and they started a football program. Well, you know, in the southeast where I was living, football, you know, my kids had been playing since an early age, but in that area, football had never been played north of the Arctic Circle. And this mm. is 340 miles <laughs> north of oh. the Arctic Circle and um, with no teams around. So you would have to fly wow. at least 500 miles to play a team. Uh, so all these problematic things is on the frozen tundra. Grass does not grow. So they mm. had taken a patch of gravel and they had lined it with flour for the yard lines and they oh were playing on this gravel field, but it was making a difference. And wow. I, and, and they showed in this ESPN special how 
uh, you know, people would say, you know, this is a waste of money. It's going to cost so much. You know, we need to be buying computers and books and those mm -hmm. kind of things. And, you know, I told my husband, I said, that football program is going to save their lives. Mm -hmm. And my husband said, you're right. And I couldn't let it go, Brenda. You know, it's like one of those things that you just, it just kept coming back over and over again. And my husband was putting in an artificial turf field in our area in Jacksonville. And it was like the Lord said, if you need that in Jacksonville, Florida, wow. for, for your youth, how much more do they need that mm. in Alaska? Mm. I was in sales at the time. And I thought, you know what, I'll just put together or a portfolio. I'll take it to Nike or Under Armour or one of those big sporting companies. And they would just love to do this. <laughs> and, <laughs> You'd and I, hope, right? <laughs> I, I did all that, but it didn't uh, happen like that. It didn't happen oh. like that at all. Mm. Um, but what did happen is that people, just ordinary people, heard about it. Wow. Uh, the story hit the Associated Press um, and, and people started giving and they wanted to be a part of it and just ordinary mm. people doing what they could do, uh, to make it happen. So fast forward on that, um, we brought the team down to Jacksonville. We taught them how to play the game because only mm -hmm. two of the young men had ever even played the game. So we taught them how to play the game, um, it was My just goodness. an amazing thing, them being in our homes and us getting to know them. You know, it's one of those things when you think you're doing something that's going to help somebody, but yeah. it really ends up blessing you so much more. Oh. And that's the way we felt about that. It just blessed us so much to learn about this culture, to learn mm. about these people. Uh, these are First Nation people. They're indigenous mm -hmm. to the area. Mm -hmm. They are amazing how that... God created them to live off yeah. the land, sea, and the air. And in many of those customs, they still do. Yeah. And they are very entrenched to knowing mm. Father God, the creator, wow. because they have to depend. You're mm -hmm. in an area that's very harsh and yeah. you can't, you can't just go to the store and buy something, you know, right. you have to depend on God to provide. Mm. And they and they do, and so their faith is strong, and we learned so much about caring for, for others, and and they just taught us a lot about what really what sacrifice and love of your neighbor mm. and respect for elders. I could go on and on yeah. about the things that we learned from them, but we ended up uh, uh, in six months, and, and again, it's just a miraculous story. But we we made an announcement at our football field, our high school football field in Jacksonville, Florida, Bartram Trail High School. We made an announcement um, that we were going to help this community 4,000 miles away. And uh, we were, and we did. And, and uh, the products went by, uh, UPS was a huge uh, support of it. Um, um, so by uh, semis uh, to, oh. to get onto the train, uh, to get to Seattle and get on a barge and then be flown in the rest of the way. So it, all these modes of transportation, about 13 transportation companies coming together to work together. Mm. And so this beautiful blue uh, field with yellow end zones, um, oh, that's their colors. It, it sits right off of the Arctic Ocean, and um, it, but it was installed and they played their first game on it in front of national media mm -hmm. in less than six months from the time oh. that we had announced it. So wow. only God, only God, oh. when a barge yeah. goes one time a year, <laughs> only God. Yeah. That's it. I mean, that is no small feat uh, for, for all of those things to come together. Um, I, I'm sure, were there moments of difficulty where you wondered oh. and, oh, yeah. I mean, what did that look mm -hmm. like? We've got a couple, couple minutes here. Uh, tell yeah. us about things that, the way that you saw God move in, in the process. Yeah, I think my biggest takeaway with this, it fell through so many times mm -hmm. and, uh, to the point of where I had taken people's money and it didn't look like it was going to happen. And mm. 
it was going to really cost me a lot, you know, with my mm. reputation. Uh, sure. I was working for a bank at the time and, and I, I really felt like I was going to lose my job, you know, if, oh, if things wow. didn't work because my reputation would be so tarnished. Um, mm -hmm. There were so many things that fell through. And uh, one of the one of the major ones was uh, the tra the transporting the products uh, that were mm -hmm. they had just the turf company wouldn't let go of the products and until we paid all the money and it was just one oh. thing after another and I got on the phone with our transportation specialist and he said Kathy he said you know you you just got to realize this this is there's no plan B this can't be done mm -hmm. this is a project that takes you know, a two or three years of planning. And, um, yeah. I knew I was like, no, we have to have it done, you know, this season. Yeah. Um, yeah. cause the program was so, such in jeopardy, but that night I just was, I was angry with the Lord. Cause I was like, you know, Lord, I know you told me to do this, but mm -hmm. why would you tell me to do something that can't be done? And, wow. but I woke That's up good. that next morning <laughs> with so much, um, so much faith and it was mm. it was like the lord just put in my spirit that he had given me the vision and he would give me the faith needed you know our faith comes from yeah. the lord our measure yes, of faith comes from the lord mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and so i was more encouraged that day and um i got a, ended up getting on the phone with the elders in the community and they'd never met me and here i was this white woman from florida and uh but I just shared my heart with them and yeah. they, they helped see the project through. So learning that things don't always look like we think they're going to look, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say most of the time they don't look anything like we think they're going right. to look. And, <laughs> yeah. and it doesn't happen when we think it's going to happen or like we think yeah. it's going to happen, mm. but just trusting the mm. Lord. Amen, man. That's a good word. And we tend to lean on sometimes our magical thinking, but God has a process that's at work. And it's for us just as much as it is for the ultimate goal that he's called us to. I want you to hold that thought and friends, we'll be right back. Paul and Brenda Crouch here, baby. We have great plans coming up <laughs> we do we're here in anaheim at our beautiful studio that god has provided but what do we have coming up we've got amazing content coming up that we're actually very excited about we just finished season four and we have plans to do some broadcasting from around the world mm -hmm. uh, different locations and god's opening doors for us amen but they say you have not mm -hmm. because you ask not mm -hmm. and in four years we have never asked for a donation or any yeah. kind of support and now we are. It's our heart to see that media is done right and that we give God glory for everything. And we just are following the call and we're doing it honest. And uh, we hope that you will catch the vision and ride this wave with us and know Amen. that it, God is gonna continue to pour more and more out as we follow in obedience to Him. Amen. Go to Brenda's website. There's all kinds of resources there for giving. God bless you. BrendaCrouch.com. We're back with Kathy Parker. And Kathy, you just told us this incredible story of how you were able to go through the process and deliver this football field for a remote team in Alaska. And this has become, uh, you actually wrote a book about it. And uh, the, the name of the book is Northern Lights, is that right? That is correct. So uh, tell us a little bit about writing the book. And uh, I, I know that your, your uh, publishers originally said it's a little too impersonal and they wanted you to put a little more of your story, some of your personal stuff in there. How did that feel and how did that affect your family, your community, as you begin to share from a, a little bit more vulnerable place? Oh, that was, um, it was really therapy for me to, to write the book, um, but I didn't really 
think that it would be something that would be shared with everyone, you yeah, know, uh, yeah. when I was first, first just documenting everything and writing down uh, the events. And one of the things that I realized that if we, because we had entered actually into a contract to do a movie mm -hmm. uh, before the book was published. And so oh, okay. it was important, a movie, you know, you can't tell the whole story. Yeah, you know, because it's short, you know, right. um, uh, they they said it's almost like if you took a book and you took probably 80 pages, you know, that mm -hmm. you'd be able to to tell a story. So from from beginning to end. So it was important for me to honor the people that had helped. It was important for me to tell the story in in the way that I remembered it. And I would even say. Um, well, I hope I'm getting this right. And they're like, look, it's from your point of view. So mm -hmm. it, it's okay. And so I was thankful to be able to get that down. But yes, when I first turned it in to the, um, to the publishing company, uh, they came back and said, okay, what makes you tick? Why would you have <laughs> such strong faith? And, and so then wow. I had to get a lot more personable, you know, in that. Yeah. And I was a little nervous about that. Mm. But then I was like, I talked to my husband about it and we were both like, you know what, if it helps people. And that's one yeah. of the things I'm so glad that I did it because I'm seeing that a lot now mm -hmm. uh, with people that will say those are the parts that meant the most to them because wow. they can relate to it. Yeah. That is so true. And, uh, you know, for any of everybody has a story, Kathy. I mean, it's it's amazing, um, though, in our especially in our Western culture here, we tend to want to run away from any kind of painful situation. And, uh, you know, we live in a world of fil filters and masks and, uh, you know, we see through the windows, um, so to speak, of other people's lives, but we don't really see the, um, you know, the grind and the, the details of how they had to flesh that out and work that out with God. And so I think it's very important to be able to bring an authentic message because that's where the impact is really made. It's in the struggle. It's in the pain that yeah. we discover the beauty of Christ, the beauty of his grace and his goodness mm -hmm. in what, you know, all in, and we find purpose, um, you know, it, how would you say those stories have touched other people? I'm, have you had any kind of feedback from anyone that's maybe experienced um, encouragement and hope just from this story? Absolutely. And I think that's one of the things when we talk about my story, some people will say, well, is it a football story? But it yeah. has, it goes so, you know, further than that. Yeah. And one, one thing that, uh, one story I, I can share that it just, I was just thinking about it the other day and about how, um, how I saw that mm -hmm. sharing our stories are so important. They're so important because we just yeah. don't know who's listening and who needs it at the time. That's right. But I was at a ball game. And of course, you know, with my husband coaching and our kids all being athletes, we, we most of our life was spent at the ball field. Yeah. And uh, a lady came up to me and I did not remember her. But she she told me, she said, I met you a few years ago when you were talking about putting the field in Alaska. And she said, and I just remember thinking, wow, you know, that that's, that's going to be a miracle right there. You know, if yeah. that could even happen. And, um, and she said, and I just want to tell you, she said, my son, um, had, had cancer and he was very, very sick and he was like four or five years old. Mm. And she said, we had been through so many surgeries and we had just, he had been so sick. And she said, we didn't know if he was going to make it. And she said, and I was so tired and I had spent so much time at the hospital and I just didn't know if, if I could, she said, we just didn't know if we had the faith to just believe. Yeah. And she said, and I was with my, my little boy and she said, and I just cried out to the Lord and she was like, Lord, I need to see a miracle. I need mm -hmm. to see Lord that you still do miracles. Yes. And she said, I turned on the news and there was your story. She said, there was that field. 
she said there, and she said, I started screaming and she said, the nurses all ran in and they're like, what, what? And she was like, I know that crazy lady. She said, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. Oh. And I, and I'm just listening to her and I'm just like weeping, listening yeah. to her. And yeah. I said, well, what about your son? And she said, oh, that's him running around on the field. You know, I mean, he was totally healed. But the mm-hmm. thing that it did is it showed me that people need to see big faith. They yeah. need to see, and it's risky and yes. it's hard, Good, but they mm-hmm. need to see it. They do. They need to see that God responds. Yes. You know, when you are faithful and when you are obedient, God yes. responds. Amen. Yes, he does. And I have very many uh, sil- similar stories uh, in my own life that I can attest to that very thing. Sometimes we don't know what our uh, challenges and our experiences are actually setting us up for and how they're going to be a light. And, you know, the scripture says they come by the the word of their testimony and the blood of the lamb. I mean, that is all a part of being a witness of the goodness of God. And he cares about those who, who are in need. Tell us in the next couple of minutes, how this has changed that community. And uh, I mean, did the new field have the impact that you hoped it would? And what are some of the changes that came about? Hope does a lot of things to change a community. And we got to see that every time that we would go and visit, we would see new things that had, um, had sprung up, whether it be a, a new hospital that they had built, a hospital building, um, or a new business, but th- just hope that came to the community. Yeah. Another thing it did is it put, it really put that community in the, to look at it differently. Um, the mm-hmm. native people and their culture and their customs, the community had really gotten away from, but mm-hmm. when you brought something um, attention from around the world mm. onto a community where they were intrigued by the native dances and the customs. And they sort yeah. of blended it all together, Brenda. Uh, at a football game, they would um, have the native uh, dances at halftime, uh, the ethnic food that they would serve in the concession mm. stand. You could get caribou stew. You could get, I mean, it was just the most amazing <laughs> thing it. to see a community gather together mm. and to be so proud of what they had yeah. and be able mm. to have that kind of hope. Um, of course, now several of those, uh, well, the players have, have uh, graduated, many of them, went on uh, some of them to college and then they would come back and they're very um, giving back to the community in different jobs. Wow. And I'm seeing them as fathers and, and husbands and, and they just, um, it's just been a wonderful thing to see and it keeps growing. I keep seeing things that have sprung forth from it. Um, that field, because it is so unique and just stands out. Um, If you've ever seen tundra, it is Mm -hmm. all the same color. You can, you Mm -hmm. can hardly distinguish the land, the sea Mm -hmm. and the, and the sky. I mean, the sky and the, and the water and the, and the land, Mm -hmm. you can hardly distinguish it because they're all like shades of, of gray. Mm -hmm. Um, So very little, little color. And then you have this field that's bright mm-hmm. blue with yellow mm-hmm. insongs. It, it, it's just, oh, I was amazing. just talking to someone from Alaska today and they said, you know, it's like God stamped the top of the world. And it yeah. is so true. Amazing. Well, what God has done through your life and through your vision is absolutely incredible. And I'm just so honored to be able to tell your story. Tell us real quickly about where we can find your book and what's happening with the film. Okay, we're getting really close to start production on the film. And so hopefully right. in a few weeks, <laughs> I'll be able to give you some really exciting news about that. Um, I've learned a lot about uh, the process that it takes. 
um, the book, if, if they will just send me a, an email, I will be glad uh, to send a copy. Um, and my email is cparker at southgeorgiastudios.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, my friend. This was a lot of fun. I appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much, Brenda. And friends, we thank you for being here. I know you were encouraged by this incredible story of how God cares about the most intricate detail of our lives and our communities. Thanks for being here. Come again next time. I'm Brenda Crouch.